It's Maria from Still Dreaming Homestead. I'm glad to be back with you. And if this is your first time, please, if you like this story, subscribe and share it with others. I'm sure there are lots of kids that would like these books. The first one, though, was called The Hair Pulling Bear Dog. You would probably want to start at the beginning, although you can start anywhere, but this one was very good. So I have them all on my um, YouTube channel. So you just go back, scrolling back, and they're all numbered with the chapters and the names of the books and stuff. So I'm hoping lots of people get to hear these stories because I think they're so good. But tonight we're reading out of The Ghost Dog of Stony Ridge. So yesterday, DJ and Alfred went to Sutton Lake and they saw for themselves dead fish all over. And when some campers came, they could smell the coffee just smelled horrible. And so they know that that poison that they've been talking about is really in the water. That's a bad thing. But after those campers left, because they didn't want to be by a poisoned lake, DJ and his friend, Alfred, they heard the bugle dog, the ghost dog that everybody's been looking for. So they are going to try to get it. So we are on chapter nine already, chasing the ghost dog by moonlight. The boys skirted the arm of the lake, running as fast as they could by the moonlight. They saved their flashlights except for the occasional quick look at some obstacle, something that could be in their way. It took only a second to decide whether to go around to the mantensia, remember that's a type of tree, or downed logs or under low limbs. DJ hoped they wouldn't kick up any rattlesnakes. Boy, I'd hope not. Though he knew that usually the reptiles get out of people's way if given a chance. You know, that's good because I wouldn't want to be by one. Still hear the ghost dog? Alfred asked as they splashed across the marshy area and stepped into dry land to catch their breath. Yeah, don't see him anymore, but I hear other hounds too all different directions. More hunters have heard the ghost hound, Alfred guessed, and they're out trying to catch him. But this is one animal their dogs can't trail any better than Hero. The boys ran on, breathing hard, but afraid to stop because they didn't want to lose their quarry that they were looking for. As they rounded the arm of the lake and swung back the way the hound had vanished, Alfred slipped and fell. His thick glasses fell free of one ear. Just like that, that's probably not going to help him very much. DJ stopped and panted, You okay? Yeah, just scratched my hands, breaking my fall. Let me fix these glasses, smeared them, but can't take time to clean them now. You still hear my dog? DJ smiled in the moonlight. I still hear him, but he's back in those pines. Blacker in the inside of a mud pie in there. So it's really, really dark. We'll use our lights, come on. DJ let his dog run ahead of him and the light led and the light lead chain instead of making Hero stay at the heel position. The little hair puller had shown no interest in their quarry after identifying it as a hound. Right about here is where we saw the ghost dog. DJ panted, slowing and looking around. Up ahead a little more, I think, Alfred replied. 
along about where that old dead snag is standing. Suddenly, Hero's unconcerned trot changed. His nose went to the ground. He sniffed loudly, crashing about left and right, circling for scent. Look, cried Alfred, Hero's got the scent of that ghost dog. The little hair puller threw back his head and let out a howl. Then Hero leaped to the end of his leash and began pulling as hard as he could as he surged ahead, fighting the chain. His powerful hind legs dug into the ground and his stubby tail whirled like a broken propeller in the moonlight. No, DJ yelled, starting to run after the dog. He smelled whatever it was the ghost dog was trailing. Raccoon? Alfred asked, running up even with DJ. No way of knowing for sure, but the way Hero's going after it, I'd guess a bear. Bear? Alfred skidded to a stop and gulped in air. <clears throat> we got no gun. We got nothing if we run up against a bear. Don't worry, DJ laughed, half turning to call back over his shoulder. That booger's probably chase whatever that bugler. <laughs> not Booger, has probably chased whatever it was right out of the county. But Hero can smell the scent strong now. Listen to him baying. I hear all those other hounds too, Alfred puffed, trotting again with his friend. And away off over there, I can hear the ghost dog. Come on, we've got to get to him first. The chase took them round another small arm of the lake. The boys were now on the opposite shore from where they had camped. Hero was straining at his leash, baying joyfully and enjoying the chase. DJ ran steadily, remembering what his grandfather used to say. DJ was half jackrabbit and half boy. The jackrabbit part was taking over, but Alfred was all boy and the long chase was tiring him out. He was falling behind. DJ pulled in the struggling dog and waited for his friend. You okay, Alfred? Alfred breathed hard. Before answering, he bent forward and rested both hands on his legs just above his knees. Guess I'm out of shape, he panted at last. Gotta rest a minute. DJ held firmly to Hero as he twisted and pulled, baying and anxious to be back on the trail. You notice where the ghost dog's running now? Alfred nodded, trying to catch his breath. Yeah, beyond the far end of the lake. He's run almost halfway around it, but now he's inland, back in the trees. Beyond the bob wire fence, DJ said quietly. Alfred swallowed hard and looked the way DJ's free hand was pointing. You're right. That ghost dog went through that fenced place following whatever it's trailing. I've been thinking. All those hunter hounds are coming in from every direction except the lake where we are. The bear, whatever the ghost dog's running after, isn't likely to like all those hounds closing in on him. So, so if it's a bear, there's only one hound close to him and maybe a couple dozen other dogs baying all around, then that bear's got a choice to make. You're right. The only way of escape for that bear is to turn back and take on that lone dog. And you know what Brother Paul says, any hound worth his salt knows he can't fight a bear alone. Maybe, maybe it's not a bear. Look at Hero. The only reason he's trying so hard to get moving again is because he's on the trail of a bear. Sooner or later, that bear's going to... Try to kill my dog? Alfred exclaimed. DJ, we can't let him kill the ghost hound. We just can't. Only possibility I can see is cut through the bob wire fence and try to be there to help with Hero when that bear comes to bay and makes a stand for it. 
Maybe the bear will climb a tree. Bears are smart. If he takes a tree, the hunters will come with their guns. If he backs up against a log or boulder or something to protect his backside, he can kill one hound easily. So the bear will stand and fight on the ground. DJ, we've got a risk going through that wire. Maybe nobody will be there this time of night. Or maybe we'll run right into Fogelly or Ormley, or maybe others. They could have guns. For a long moment, Alfred hesitated, breathing hard and fast. Slowly, he straightened up and pushed his thick glasses up with the thumb of his right hand. DJ, I never wanted anything in my life as much as I want that ghost dog. And I'm willing to take the chance on that wire if you are. Let's say a prayer first. The boys bowed their heads and silently asked for protection. Then they started running again, following Hero, who strained at his leash and filled the night air with the loudest barks DJ had ever heard. Wish there was some way we could make him be quiet, he panted to Alfred running beside him. If there's anybody beyond that fence, they'll know we're coming and be ready for us. We'll know in a couple minutes, Alfred replied. The boys ran on through the moonlight, hearing the perfect voice of the distant ghost town, but slowly. Even above that, DJ seemed to hear his heart pounding as they neared the silver strands of bob wire glistening in the moonlight. The boys helped each other through the wire. Then they sprinted across the open area into the deep shadows of the great conifers. The mountains echoed Hero's eager, throat, full-throated baying. We're going to have to use our flashlights, DJ said almost in a whisper. He realized it was silly for him to be quiet when Hero's loud baying had announced their coming for the last half hour. Won't matter, Alfred answered, pulling his light from his right front pocket. That loudmouth dogs of yours is wel will have a welcoming committee waiting for us if there's anybody in those shadows. Suddenly, DJ tripped and fell. His he went down hard, and the dog's the dog's chain slipping from his hand as the boy braced his palms to ease his fall. He called Hero, no, come here. Hero didn't seem to hear the commands, for he was vanishing into the deep shadows. His sharp, chopping barks echoing from every mountainside. What happened? Alfred asked, flashing his light on DJ. Tripped over something. DJ gave up looking after his vanished dog. He looked down at Alfred's flashlight, reflecting on something. DJ snapped his light down, too. He bent and reached with his free hand. Alfred asked, what is it? Just an empty whoops. Alfred, we found something. Alfred leaned over so his light also focused on the item at their feet. A fiber container. What's that word written on it? Henta. DJ barely whispered the word. And there's another. Maybe fell off something like a pickup. Suddenly in the distance, there was an unmistakable metallic click. It sounded like a magazine load. That's someone loading their gun, getting ready to shoot. Being shoved into a rifle or a shell being jacked up in the firing pin. Both boys glanced up in alarm. A second later, there was a different sound. The motor cranked once as someone stepped on the starter, but the engine didn't take off. Or a motorcycle, Alfred exclaimed. Come on, DJ, let's get out of here. DJ didn't need any urging. A moment later, the motorcycle caught. A single headlight came on. The beam swung in a wide, fast, arc searching arc. 
It hit the boys, paused, then flipped back and centered on their backs. The motorcycle roared into full life and the headlights bore down on them. Alfred yelled, we're never going to make it to the fence in time. He'll catch us for sure. And that is the end of chapter nine. Boy, they're in trouble. We don't know where Duger is. But we do know they found some cartridges of the poison that's been being leaked into that lake somehow. Maybe that's part of the secret. I don't know. But I just want to remind you I love you. I really do. I'll be back again tomorrow to read. And most importantly, always remember God loves you. He always will. I hope you have a good day or night whenever you are watching this. And I'll be reading to you again soon. Okay, good night. Mm-hmm.